Look, I'm not going to waste your time like all the other YouTube videos when you search best Rocket League settings. Spoiler, there is no one best settings in Rocket League. So wait, what am I going to tell you about for the next 16 minutes? Well, if there is one thing I've learned in my now 10K combined hours playing and coaching Rocket League, it's that even though there isn't one best answer for settings, some settings are a lot worse than others. And even worse than that, if you make just two or three wrong decisions, you might accidentally make it impossible to learn new mechanics. Now, do you have to listen to what I say? No, I'm not your dad. But what I can say for certain is if you watch this video start to finish, whether you're a new player or you already know a little bit about the game, this video will save you hundreds of hours of failed mechanics if you just take the time to watch now and get this right from the start. So without any further ado, here are the nine must know rules for settings in Rocket League. By the way, at the time I'm recording this intro, two out of the eight coaches from our coaching partner are completely booked out. So if you're ranked platinum, diamond, or champion, and you're looking for private coaching, DM their Discord account with the keyword last six to see if you might qualify for coaching. I'll have their Discord first link in the description below. That's keyword last six for coaching. Let's get into the settings. Setting rule number one, turn off camera shake and controller vibration. You can find both in the tabs on screen here, but the reason you want to do this is mostly because I said so. You know, I don't know if camera shake and controller vibration actually make you play worse, but I don't think I've ever seen somebody above gold using camera shake and controller vibration. If you have camera shake on, turn it off right now, please. This is the worst setting you can play on. I'd rather play with no boost at all than with camera shake on, seriously. So just to protect yourself from getting made fun of by your friends, go ahead and turn these off. That way, even if you aren't playing good, you look good. Oh yeah, by the way, this is a follow along style video. So like, as you're watching this, I highly recommend you actually open Rocket League and tick these settings through, like set them up with me as we go through the list. That way you don't miss anything and it's just easier for you. Step number two, we're gonna go into the camera settings tab here. And if you're on PC using Bacchus mod, you should see a bonus option called camera preset here. Now, if you're on console or you don't have Bacchus mod installed, first off, I'm sorry for you, but second off, don't panic. I'm going to show you how to work around this in a second. But if you are on PC and you went on Google and you typed in Bacchus mod and you downloaded Bacchus mod, the fastest camera setup is to just use a pro preset. If you scroll through the settings list here, you'll be able to import pros preferences for camera settings. So experiment with that, pick the one that you like best, but if you're on console, that's okay. I'm not going to waste your time and explain every camera setting in this video because that'll take like five more minutes of this video. Instead, I'm going to put my camera settings setup video from last year up on screen here. And if you click that and just use the timestamps in that video, you can skip straight to the camera settings section of that video. And I break down each setting and exactly what it does step by step so you can tinker with it as you want. Or if you want just like literally middle of the line stock settings, you can use my camera preset. Because when I was setting up my camera, I went to the pro website, Liquipedia to look at all the pro camera settings. And I just picked literally the exact average among pros for every setting. So if you want something that's just straight up middle of the line stock and safe, you can copy my my camera preset by pausing the video here and uh, Camille, the video guy will help me out and you can just copy all those down. And step number three is don't copy pros. Yes, I'm dedicating an entire section to tell you to not copy pros because I did, and it might be the biggest regret of my short and pretty uneventful Rocket League competitive career. I totally mess up my touch. So jokes aside, I'm going to show you my controller settings here, but please don't copy any pros or much less mine or else you might screw yourself in the long run. Here's why. I copied the pro player Rizzo's controls. And if you don't know, the catch with Rizzo's controls are that we don't use a decelerate or accelerate button. That's right. So we don't use our triggers to drive forward or back. We just use our left 
joystick. And that sounded great at the time because it freed up a lot of keybinds for me, but it's not so great because it makes certain advanced car control moves on the ground slower. I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but I'm telling you this so that way you know pro controls are a good place to start, but they are not the golden rule. A lot of pros have learned to make their controls work, even when their controls aren't the best. So you might be wondering, well, great, Luke, if I can't copy pros, what's the fastest way to find a good set of controller keybinds? Good question. I've helped a lot of people through my coaching get this stuff set up. So these next four steps are going to be my four-step checklist to make sure that your keybinds are competitively viable and are optimized for ranked, and you can actually learn all the mechanics you want to learn. Let's get into those. First thing you want to do, bind joystick air roll and power slide to the same button. Because air roll only happens in the air and power slide only happens on the ground, you can free up real estate on your controller and save buttons by just putting them on the same button. Warning, I'm not saying to bind directional air roll and power slide to the same button. Directional air roll is how I personally make the majority of my movements in the air whenever I'm spinning. So do yourself the favor, bind joystick air roll and power slide to the same button and then move on to step number five pick one directional air roll and put it somewhere easy to access. And if you've ever wondered how the pros air roll through the air so smooth, it's because, well, one, they have 10,000 hours, but two, it's because they're using directional air roll, not joystick air roll. So even if you're just gold or plat right now, eventually you're going to want to learn a directional air roll. So pick a button, whether that's the D-pad or the back, like Zen, which we'll talk about in a second, and bind this from the start. That way it's protected and you can always learn at least one directional air roll pretty easily. Side note, I had a question on stream where somebody asked me, is it better to put directional air roll on the back of your controller? If you don't know what I'm talking about, there was a pro player named Zen. And without getting into too much detail, Zen basically became debatably best in the world in like a matter of months. Now, one thing special about Zen is he uses L2 and R2, I believe, for his directional air roll left and air roll right, which got people thinking, is the reason Zen is the best because he has directional air roll on his back? Spoiler, I think no. Technically, is it better to have directional air roll on a trigger where you get sort of continuous movement instead of just binary on and off movement like a button? Yeah, it's probably marginally better, but is the reason Zen is the best in the world because he discovered that? No. So the take home message for you is if you like it, sure, put it on one of the triggers, especially if you have those buttons free. But if you already have a thousand hours playing the game, do you need to change your air roll left or air roll right to match Zen's controls? in order to go from champ two to champ three. No. On to setup step six, move boost somewhere to the back of your controller. Now, why do I say this? Well, by default, Rocket League binds X as your jump circle to boost, I believe, and triangle to ball camp, which means you have like three very important buttons. I'm not sure what square is as well. I'm pretty sure square is an important button, all being controlled by your right thumb. So if you wanna make a bunch of quick decisions like jump, boost, and turn off ball cam or turn on ball cam. If you want to do that all at the same time, you have to fat finger your thumb over like three buttons. And uh, it leads to a lot of unintentional backflips when you're trying to aerial, a lot of miss inputs, even at the RLCS level. And it's just hard. So to make things easier on yourself, I would take boost because it's a button you're going to be pressing all the time in ranked and just move it to the back of your controller. That way you can tap boost with one of your pointer fingers or middle fingers, and your thumb isn't more overloaded than it needs to be. The last thing I recommend you do as a sort of bonus step is just go into free play and make sure you can press all of these buttons, joystick arrow, power slide, boost, and jump at the same time. If you can press them all at the same time without too much difficulty, what that means is you're probably going to be able to learn every mechanic that exists in the game right now and any new ones that come out. On to step number 
number seven, max your controller sensitivity. Controller sensitivity might be one of the most underrated but important setting to understand. And if one setting needed to be custom to you, this would be it. So listen up here and make sure you get the setup right. Basically, controller sensitivity in Rocket League is the equivalent to your aim sensitivity in a shooter game like a Fortnite or a CS or a Valorant. Higher sensitivity means you need to do less inputs to get a quicker or more jittery response. And a lower sensitivity means you're going to have a slower but more consistent or smooth movement pattern. Now, I have sort of three factors for you to consider when setting up your controller sensitivity. So here are the three things you need to think about. A, your rank. B, your previous experience. And C, your preference. Here's how each one affects your controller sensitivity. When it comes to rank, I recommend the lower rank you are, the lower sensitivity you go. Now, just for context, standard meta range for sensitivity is like 1.0 to 1.8. So what I mean by that is lower ranks would benefit more from being in that 1.0 to 1.4 steering and aerial sensitivity is because the lower rank you are, the more important consistency is, right? The thing that you're struggling with at platinum is not hitting the double reset. It's just hitting the ball. However, as you get to higher ranks, that's when I recommend you increase your sensitivity because the constraint at the higher ranks is not consistency, although well, it sort of always is, but it also becomes more and more your speed. So whereas a plat, I would generally say stick to 1.0, 1.2, maybe 1.4 on the high end. If you're grand champ, I would say, okay, fine. You can use 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, or even closer to 2.0, which is what I currently use. But I'll also use Rizzo's controls, so do as I say, not as I do. Another thing that affects your controller sensitivity is your previous experience. So for me, for example, when I used to make Fortnite videos back on this channel, I think it is much better to work up with your sensitivity than work down. I remember I was always a very high sensitivity player, and so I enjoyed a high sensitivity. For that reason, I've always played Rocket League with a high sensitivity, and I've found good results with that. And finally, the last factor to experiment with is preference. A lot of different settings can work. The better question is what works best for you. So if you're somebody who's sitting SSL right now and you use 1.2 aerial and controller sensitivity, look, you're higher ranked than me. And if you find that 1.2 aerial and steering is what works well for you, keep using it. The most important thing is finding what works best for you. So we have Amanek that is playing with a reverse uh, sound, which means that left is right and right is left. So basically when he is on the, on the left, you, you watch on the right, you know? But at the end of the day, don't change what works best for you just because you heard me or anybody else online say that you have to do it our way. Step number eight, drop your dead zone as much as possible. We're going over to the dead zone settings tab. Most people don't know what this does. Basically, controller dead zone is how far you need to move your joystick in order for the game engine to register a directional input. Controller dead zone of 1.0 means you need to push down your joystick all the way vertically until you hear a click in order to do a front flip. Whereas a controller dead zone of 0.05 means you only have to push your controller joystick 5% of the way up in order for the game to register a front flip if you jump again. So basically the lower the dead zone, the less overall movement you need to do, but the more prone you might be to accidentally going a direction that you didn't mean to just because you pushed the joystick a tiny little bit. If you want the advanced explanation of like all the controller dead zone directions and the difference between like controller dead zone circle and controller dead zone square, and I'll link a halfway dead video, a rocket science video on screen that like if you want to nerd out about that stuff. But the general recommendation I'll tell you right now is for PlayStation, lower is better and almost all pros have settled at the 0 0.05 mark. I use 0 0.04 because uh, I'm quirky, I guess. But generally, the lower you can make your dead zone, the faster you're going to play and overall, the better. Controller dead zone on Xbox tends to be different. Now, 90 to 95% of pros that I know use the PS4 controller because PS4 is the best for whatever reason. Don't ask me why. But for those that do use Xbox, it seems that a higher controller dead zone on Xbox is more popular. Most Xbox players are using a controller dead zone of around 0.10. Go with that and only adjust up and down little by little if you need to. Final step 
of your setup. This is what I call the maximum performance stack. Three steps. Number one, turn your game on full screen. Number two, turn the sync off. And number three, set your render detail to maximum and all the other effects to like minimum, just shut them off. The reason we do these steps is first off, playing full screen in VSync reduces what's called input lag. And input lag is super important in Rocket League because it's the time delay between when you press a button and the game registers that input. So if you wanna play Rocket League at a really high level, you want the lowest input lag and full screen with VSync off is gonna reduce it the most. Secondly, we wanna set our render detail to high, but all the effects to low, because this is gonna give us the best video visuals for competitive play. Now, are there a few bonus things that you can ask about in the comments and I'll try to answer? Yes, there are things like max out your nameplate size, chat settings like bind on your left or bind on your right if you can. And there are special like dead zone shapes like circle or square or the triangle. I, I honestly, I don't even know what most of those do. And if you have questions on any of that stuff, ask them down in the comments below. But if you follow those steps, you should pretty much be covered with your settings up until SSL. And I promise you don't need to watch any other settings guide. You're going to be good. If you're still confused at this point or you need help with something like gameplay related, the best place I recommend you ask is not actually the YouTube comment section. I love you guys, but the YouTube comment section can be a dark place. <laughs> the best place to actually answer your questions is in my free Discord server. If you don't know, I run Rocket League's largest improvement Discord with over 51,000 members, I think, right now. And I have links to all of my settings and presets, as well as any downloads mentioned throughout any of these videos. Plus, it's, in my opinion, the best place to go to find teammates and get your questions answered from better players, and it's completely free to join. So if you made it to this point in the video and you want to show your love and pay it forward, join up to the Discord because there are always people there asking questions and sharing answers. I'll have my Discord first link down below. Click that. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.